Hi friends. Um, I'm adding this on to the video that I'm uploading at the moment. The thought just occurred to me that um, by making your own grow bags with this landscaping fabric or weed barrier, um, there's 50 feet on this roll. And I looked it up online, and it's still about ten dollars. Or yeah, about ten dollars for fifty feet by three feet. And um, if you're cutting off twenty to twenty-four inches, and then dividing this by a third, twelve inches, you're actually getting seventy-five grow bags for ten dollars or less. With me getting this on discount at five ninety-nine, it's like a major bargain to make it myself. Now, if you'll continue watching the video, I'll show you how I'm putting them together without a sewing machine. Hi friends, how are you today? Um, last night I decided I'm gonna make some of my own grow bags and I'm not in um, the mood to go dig through the shed and find my sewing machine that I got it in like 1960, no, 76, 80, 77, something like that. And um, I took some landscaping fabric that I had from probably 10 years ago. Uh, I got three feet by 50 feet, and I guess I got it back when, you know, the, I guess fall when planting season was over. This was like $9.99 and I got it for $5.99. You know, and it's just been sitting in my closet for a number of years. So what I'm doing is um, making little bitty grow bags. And I, I already tried it out. Let me grab this one over here. This is, um, I've got a potato in each one of these bags. And what I've done is just rolled them down to where they're probably a half a gallon or less size. They're, where's the tape measure? About four, feet, four inches wide by almost six inches, you know, because I taped them this way. You can actually, you know, shape them round. It all depends on you know how you do it and I'm just putting them in this container right now to keep them all together but this is actually defeating the purpose if you're using sides on it like this you actually just want a shallow pan to hold the water underneath of it but I'll show you what I did or how I did this without a sewing machine basically um, you're taking the three foot roll Basically, I'm taking the three foot roll and I've got a piece of shelf board and another, let's see, um, it's like a one by 12 and a one by six maybe. And I'm rolling it out. And then taking the tape measure and going across and I want Okay, 20 inches. So I'm going to move this board right here to the 20 inch mark. Just taking a razor knife and applying a little bit of pressure and going straight down. And if it snags a little bit, or you know, if you miss a spot, it's not hard to go back over. Okay. And then you can take it and fold it into thirds.
none of this has to be perfect unless you're a perfectionist and then you can just get out the tape measure and go and measure out 12 inches Straight, 12 inches. I'm going to the center. It needs to come over an inch. Okay, I'm at the 12 inch mark. And if you want to make sure Go down to each end, there's 12 inches, 12 inches, and then apply a little pressure to the board. Take your knife down and cut it off. Or if you do it like I was doing it a while ago, um, what's left, you can fold it in half. take your scissors and just cut straight down the line but like this you're taking a chance that the material will move at the bottom so it is a little bit better if you want to maintain a straight cut to um, find a board a ruler you know something to um, sandwich it between This is way too fat. So, oops. There's not enough pressure, that's why that moved. And then when you get it sticking to it, then you didn't um, press hard enough. You can just take the scissors and nip it or take the knife back and recut it a little. And what I would do is go ahead and cut up, um, pre-cut as many as I plan on using and just make a pile like an assembly line. After that, I would just fold these like this and then um, Take a needle and thread and sew around the edges right here, down at the bottom, and then up the sides. And then let me bring the bag over and show you what I did. And if you actually want to be bored and watch me sew, so, you know, I'll show you how fast it is. All I did was flip over the bottom about a half inch and then stitch across that and then flipped over the side about a half inch stitched over that and then um, folded down the sides here you know after I turned it oh I did um, do uh, not on this one but on the finished ones I took the sides here the and made a triangle stitch across the bottom like this or you can just flip them over and create that triangle inside there without sewing. And then I just flip down the top, you know, like cuffing the bottom of your pants or your sleeves, maybe a quarter inch. This isn't really necessary, but it, you know, looks a little better like that and then I tacked it a little bit on each side instead of you know sewing the whole thing together that way I can use it as a full bag which is um, about eight inches seven eight inches depending on how much you fill it up on the bottom tall and you can fold it you know, keep folding it down and make it uh, even put in a smaller bag. And, you know, like start your tomatoes in here 
you know, in the bottom, and then as it grows, unroll the bag and make it taller and add more dirt. Okay, for this part, um, you just take it and fold it in half. And then at the bottom, or we'll pick this side, um, let's see, this side's a little more jagged, so I'll pick this side to be at the bottom, and then just fold it over. I'm not sure if you can see it, about a quarter inch, half an inch, and then the hardest part is threading this needle and you know, doing this with a kitty cat around. But let me get my glasses. These are reading glasses. Okay, put it, um, the needle in and out um, after you put a knot in it. And then you're just, or I'm just fishing it through, up and down, bringing it through. And then I'm going back a little bit and fishing it one, two, three stitches, pulling it out. Anybody that can, you know, mend a little bit can do this too. And this is not a permanent, you know, everlasting bag, <laughs> you know, so I'm not worried about the stitches being permanent and everlasting because I have no clue how long um, the landscaping fabric is going to last. Okay, I'm at the edge. And yeah, the cat needs to be petted, huh? And then at the, this edge, I'm going to fold it over about a half inch. And then put the needle in. <laughs> this is kind of hard, sassy. But if I would have started with a um, full piece of thread, I wouldn't have to stop where I just got a, a little bit done. Now I got to thread a new needle. Let me put it in and then run it through the hole. Put it in and run it through the hole. Cut it off. my thread. I can't believe I got that. But um, when you actually do it like this, like an arm's length out, bring it over together and cut it off. This amount of thread will actually sew the whole bag. show you. Start another one. See how it's the long way this part you want to bring that in. Then even up the sides. I'm going to use this part. This is the cut part. Fold it down quarter of an inch. You can I found I can make these like in no time. Just sitting here with this, you know, and um, I'm not one that likes to sew, you know, and it's, um, I don't know, for some people it's relaxing and, you know, it does give you something to do for a little bit. You know, I take it in and out. 
let's say, oh, maybe a quarter inch stitches or half inch st stitches, I'm not sure. It's all guessing. I don't like to, or I'm not a precise person. I like things, you know, that work and somehow I get lucky enough that they function and do their job. edge here. I'm just going to put it through. That way the stitch is going to be on the outside. And then fold it down. Making sure that corner will stay put and then okay. Get a little closer. I don't know if you can actually see this. I actually learned you know, I can learn from reading and from watching. And I've learned a lot of my building skills and electrical skills from watching. And asking questions. I found that you can, you know, anything that you want to do, you can just um, decide to learn and accomplish it you know, other than things that are beyond your physical capacity, you know, like the amount of weight that it can be lifted, things like that. Okay, and then at the end here, you just take it on stick it in and then take the needle through the, the loop, bring it down, make another stitch, find the loop, stick your needle in it, take it down, and that's it, and the bag is done, and then issue of threading the needle again that gets annoying it wouldn't be annoying if it weren't for patience you know it's lack of patience and patience is something I've been working on for a while you know learning to be patient it's either a skill and it can be learned you know some people are lucky to be born very patient you know and it's not that I get upset or anything it's just um I don't know kind of stressful but what I'm gonna do is take the corner Go to the corner and then pull the corner out like a triangle. And then I'm going to take and just put a stitch straight across and leave uh, from my knuckle down, you know, like this. Put the needle in. And then that's one, two, three, four stitches. And then if you want to, you can go back across and do that again.
And that's it, and you do it to the next corner. Or the other side. And tie your knot, put the needle in, and then you can put it in your hand if you want, and then bring it out. But I'm not gonna show you the other corner, I'm just gonna turn it inside out and show you on the edge. All I'm doing is taking the top and bringing it down uh, a half inch or a quarter inch. It's probably a quarter. And then you fold it over again and that leaves a little cuff. And then in the corner here, I'm just putting the needle in and then bring it down to the side of the bag. And it's, if you're, uh, you know, know anything about it, it's like a cuff or what do you call it, a hemming stitch. Each one I'm just putting a little bit of it, uh, putting it through, putting this around my hand, picking up the needle and bringing it through. You could do this to the whole area all the way around if you um, actually wanted to, but I'm only gonna do the corners. Another thing that I'm going to do is um, look for all the jeans that we have. And you know how you'd cut off jeans when you're a kid and, um, you know, you'd have all these leg pieces. I'm going to take the bottoms of the legs of the jeans and um, see if I can turn them into net pots. Or not net pots, um, grow bags. And then I've been looking for, you know, my grandkids, the youngest one is um, four. And I was wanting my daughter to save me the little jeans when he was little, and she never did. But I'd like to get a little pair of kid jeans and fill them up with soil and plant on them. I think that would be fun. But you can just get creative. And, um, you know, you don't have to go out and spend all kinds of money to um, garden um, or to start your plants inside. Just gonna finish this off. I guess I'll talk to you while I do this. But um, like the soda bottles that um, I use over there, um, they're not good to reuse and reuse and reuse. So I just um, use the, you know, one time and then dispose of them, which is not good, but I don't want to take a chance on the um, material breaking down and leaching toxins into my plants. And I don't know, I use them also to cover plants in, um, you know, like a miniature greenhouse dome in the yard when I put them outside. So the soda bottles get used, you know, reused quite a bit. And um, that's something that's going to have to stop around here. We quit for a while, and then, you know, my husband started buying soda again, and now his sugar level's really high again, so um, that'll be, you know, stopping shortly, too. But I guess I'll go ahead and close for now. I hope this has helped you, and I hope if you make these, you know, you'll let me know. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day. Bye-bye now.